I wondered if you'd like to come out and play in the sunshine with me today on a little job I've got to do on the south coast of the UK at a little holiday park. Now they've got static vans and all the usual facilities you'd expect to find at a holiday park on the south coast. They've wanted some pictures doing for quite a long time. This has been going on since January, it's now May, but of course if you're going to photograph something like this you need to make sure there's blue sky so it looks nice, leaves on the trees, otherwise it's just going to look bleak and horrible. The other thing to remember with a job like this is not to try and make it look too glamorous, but also you don't want it to look cold and unwelcoming. So it's important to try and make it look like someone's lived here, it's inviting. And I thought it might be an idea to bring you along on a real life job just to kind of see how I would go about it. First thing we need to do is to go and check in with the manager, have a chat with him, find out what he wants pictures of and see how he wants to approach it. Here we go. Two bedroom, three bedroom, a pod and a disabled. Yeah. So that's three bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. When you're doing a job like this, of course, you've got to allow your client to do what they've got to do. Oh, it's all right. You've come back it's again. Michael. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. What have we got? We've got two. Okay. Yeah, two bedroom. Two bed. Three bedroom. Three bed. Disabled van. Disabled. And pod. Just looking. Uh, pod. This will be the stuff. Yeah, so this holiday van field. Right, so that's a two that's bed, a two and bed, the yeah. same same rules go with a yeah, three bed. Really bed nice proper yeah. power showers. I might need one of those myself a bit the later. Colour, Lorna, yeah. quick, look at the colour of those trees. Don't they look lovely? It's like, a, it's like a little winter wonderland down there. It's quite nice. Okay. Well, the light is still fairly angled, so maybe I'll make a start on some of the outside. Okay, and then I'll sort out. And if you can sort out getting some pods and things nice. Yep. And we'll go from there. Brilliant. All right, thank nice you very one. much. Nice one, thanks, Mike. Super. Time to go to work. Cup of tea first. Do you want a cup of tea first? Oh, I always want a cup of tea. <laughs> I think we spent far too much time in the office drinking tea and orange juice because the sun has climbed really quite high into the sky now and the shadows are really very much overhead. Actually, if I just sort of stand here, I don't know if you can see my shadow on the ground, but it's a very short shadow. And for the exteriors, I think it'll look much nicer if the shadows are longer and the sun is much lower. So we're going to do some interiors instead of exteriors to begin with. However, in walking around the corner, I have just noticed the dappled light over here on the pods. So I think I'm going to do a quick shot of that because it may be of use to them. The dappled light's nice, but the sun is going to set over there. So I think as the sun travels that way, we're going to get a little bit more light onto the front of them, which will look much nicer. So I'm just going to take a quick shot of those and I'm going to do that from over here. The reason I'm coming over here is I want to isolate the pods with the dappled light and the trees. Might get a bit of sky and I'm not sure, but I want to kind of lose the edge of these caravans and tents just along the side here. So I'm going to shoot it from back here. Also, I don't know if you can see, but way down in between the pod on the left and the first one on the right, there's a standpipe, there's a green standpipe. Now, I really don't want that in the shot either. So I'm gonna move the shot over this way. And just by walking backwards, I can see what's going on. And I've lost the standpipe really from here. So that's quite good. Set up the camera, sun shining, there's lots of light. So we're only gonna use a low ISO, 200 ISO at the most. That should be absolutely fine. What sort of focal length? It's the focal length that works for the shot. So I can't say use this, use that. I can only tell you what I'm doing. I'm using aperture priority. I've already said 200 ISO, so it's very low. I'm using a sunny white balance. Any color correction I'll do later on. I'm using a middling aperture. I'm gonna use about F8, depends on my shutter speed, so that I'm using a sweet spot of the lens. This one I can hand hold. I'm gonna focus on the first of the three pods and just check my focal length. I'm going to do a slightly wider one, which has got a little bit of the caravans, the, the awnings in. Because it may be of use to the designer, he may want to sort of use that and chop something out. I'm just going to do another one. I'm just going to shorten the focal length, sorry, lengthen the focal length. I'm going to zoom that very slightly longer. And as I do that, I can crop out the edge of those white vans, which are something of a distraction. There we go. I want to show you something very quickly in the field. I just want to show you a difference between the light because we're going to do these shots again later as well as possibly the ones around the corner. This field, which we've got to get some shots of at some point today, is looking really, really, really flat because the light is so directly overhead. All I'm going to do is just take a quick shot from up here looking at the field 
and then again we can compare it with what it'll look like later. I'm also going to have to do a little bit of a recce around the field just to kind of make sure I've got the right angles. But I think this shot is going to look very different in a few hours time to the way it looks now. Caravan time! So we've got all the stuff in already. I'm just going to talk you through quickly what's going on. Originally I thought it'd be a much better idea to have people in here, but the realities of trying to get real people who are actually on holiday and they want to go out for the day to come and sit around for an hour while we take some pictures isn't actually going to work that well. Also trying to dress the place, it, either, it needs more stuff in it, you know? And uh, so we have decided that we're not going to put people in, we're not going to try and dress it, we're going to try and keep it like a fairly blank canvas. I think possibly a bowl of fruit on the table, maybe some flowers over here in the corner will be okay. <clears throat> but we don't want to go too far with it. So I'm going to get a shot of this end first. I'm not going to be using lighting because I don't really need to. Um, there's plenty of light in here and I don't mind if the windows just kind of blow out and look really bright because it will give it a nice bright summery sort of a feel to it. Lorna has already been round and ruched the curtains nicely for me to make sure it all looks pretty. I've just picked up a little piece of cotton, look all around, make sure there aren't any bits lying about because those will notice. So I'm going to set up the shot and I'll tell you what I've done in a moment when I've done it. I want to maximise the sense of space in this van. So instead of looking from over there into this sort of corner, which would then confine it, I want to be looking in that direction. Lorna had a brilliant idea and said, why not photograph through the window? But you can't open them, they're sealed shut. So I'm going to sit in this corner and try and get a picture which has a sense of what it's like to actually sit in here. To do that, I'm going to do a pan. I'm going to shoot in manual mode. I have got my ISO set at a 250 ISO so that I can get at least a 20th of a second shutter speed using a 10 millimeter lens at f6.7. So with that shorter lens there'll be plenty of depth of field. I'm going to just kind of extend the focus slightly as I go around the room. The initial shot I'm going to focus about here. Be really careful to keep your verticals upright. I focus on the cushion. I'm using those cupboards up on the wall as my reference point making sure the verticals are straight and take the first frame. Next, be careful to pivot around the camera, don't sweep like this. So the next one is going to go like that. I've got the, cam I've got the um, cupboards in the right place, I'm just shifting my focus slightly further into the room and take the shot. And the next one is going to come around here. Be, always be very careful, now the fruit bowl is my register on the edge there, it wants to be a third of the way into the shot. And so I'm doing this handheld because there it is. I cannot get the tripod far enough away. So there we go. There's our first shot. Next, I want to get a shot looking along the kitchen area here back to the living area where you are. And to do that, I'm going to have to tuck myself away in the main bedroom. For this one I'm going to use the tripod because I want to use lots of depth of field. I'm going to use about f16. We're on carpet, heavy tripod. f16 is going to give me an exposure of, and I'm doing it looking through the viewfinder, and eighth of a second. I've focused about a third of the way down. I'm using my 10mm lens because I want lots of width, but I don't want too much barrel distortion, so I've just cracked it back off from the 10mm 10 10 end. I'm probably at about 13, something like that. Mirror lock up to make sure we don't get vibration. Cable release. Lorna Best camera woman, get your elbow out of my shot. Thank you. And first click locks it. Second click takes it. Now I want to get a couple of details, some facilities. We've got the draining board, we've got the tap, we've got the kettle, we've got this toaster here in the corner. Now what I want to do is kind of make it a little bit interesting by making it slightly arty, a soft background, a shallow depth of field. So I'm going to run the edge of the shot through the corner of these cups, just across those cups. They're going to be sharp. You'll be able to see this in the background, it'll be slightly soft. We've got quite nice light coming through here. I need to do it quickly before the sun goes lower and starts to put highlights on the cuts. So how are we going to do it? By using a long lens. This time I've got the 70 to 200 on. Um, you're going to ask me, is this a DX sensor and all that kind of stuff? It's a, it's a 200mm lens on a DX sensor, whatever that equates to. Um, but I don't really care because I'm just interested in the shot. So I'm going to skim past those cups. I'm using the longer focal length so that I can get that shallower depth of field. I'm just going to focus on the cups. 
I'm using f2.8. That's going to give me a 250th of a second at ISO 200. Again, I'm going to use mirror lockup because I just want to make sure there is no chance of camera shake. Lock up the mirror. Take the picture. Perfect. This is a really confined space and the only way I'm going to be able to fit this in is to turn the whole shot the other way up. So I've turned the camera up the other way, you'll notice. Again, careful with the verticals. I'm kind of looking down the side of this door here. It annoys me a bit. There's some door handle in shot, but there's not much I can, oh, can I? If I push that really hard, I can just bend the door back out of the way. So there we go. It's much the same as before, F16. I'm using a quarter of a second shutter speed, 200 ISO. Because there's a window in there, there's lots of brightness. So I've set my exposure compensation to plus 0.7 to allow for the, the, the light that's coming in that will confuse the light meter. As always, cable release, mirror lockup, focused about a third of the way in on the edge of the sink. There we go. Push the door back out the way. Look up the mirror and take the picture. I really like these toilets, latrines, bogs, whatever you call them. It's a really nice space and it's kind of clean and contemporary. I think it's gonna be quite straightforward. What do I wanna do? I wanna get an overview, I want a nice wide overview, probably from this corner here, so that I can see sort of across to the hand basins there and then down through this edge here to this nice sort of glass wall with a the bench there. I like the light coming in there. It looks really, really nice. Uh, tidy up. I don't like the plastic around the bins. So what I'm going to do is just tuck it in so it's less untidy. And again with the yellow one. Yellow I believe means hazardous radioactive waste or something. I'm not sure. Right, you get the top off. But we don't want a nasty piece of yellow in there. So I expect by the law of the land, I should be wearing gloves or something to do that. There we go. It just looks a bit neater, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go and set my camera up over here. So camera's on the tripod, using the tripod again because then I can set up the composition, I can check all my verticals are straight and all my angles are good, and then I can lock it in place. Notice the camera's down a bit low because there are lots of verticals in here and I don't want them to start converging and diverging. If I take that shot from up here at eye level, then it's gonna go kind of like that. You can even see Lorna in it. <laughs> but by the magic of film, in the one I take in a moment, she'll be gone. So with the camera down low like that, that's so we can get the vertical straight. Lots of depth of field. I've got f16, I'm using a 10 millimeter lens, so it's really, really short, so I can really slide up past you and off down there toward that lovely kind of glass wall. I know there's lots of light coming in here. I'm using aperture priority, so I have dialed in plus 0.7 to give me a little bit more exposure because all this white is gonna make the camera think that it's brighter than it really is. 200 ISO, that's giving me a third of a second. Lock up the mirror use my cable release, first click lifts it, second click takes the picture. I really like the thought of a graphic sort of a shot. Coming back here, across these three doors with that lovely light coming in from the glasswork here, combined with these hand basins and those mirrors, and then the whole thing's gonna be divided, the dividing line is gonna be this wall just here. Let's do it. Almost exactly the same as before. F16, quarter of a second, I'm using aperture priority. I've got the lens just cracked slightly off 10 millimeters to help with the barreling. I've got 0.07 EV plus EV, exposure compensation dialed in to deal with some of this whiteness. My focus point is on that edge where the wall met. I'm on mirror lockup. Up goes the mirror. Take the picture. There we go. Pod time. As you can see, the lights changed quite a lot from earlier on. Remember that shot I took first thing? Let's just retake it so we can have a look and see what the difference is. It was somewhere here, I went to the right a bit to lose that standpipe and miss the car and the white 
bit of the awnings. There it is. Very different look to what we had earlier. But something else that could work brilliantly, I like these trees because I like the way these things are nestled away against the trees in their own little sort of space. And I'm thinking a bit of this foreground, something like that, looking through at these pods. That's kind of nice, I like that. So I'm just shortening the lens. Notice I'm playing with the lens to get the crop I want. I want the edge of this tree on the corner of the frame. This above, I'm shooting at, let's go to f11. So we've got nice, good middle of the lens, depth of field. Focus on the middle pod. That's giving me 125th of a second at f11, 200 ISO. So bend my knees because I want to put the pods a bit lower. So they're nestling down in the bottom of the frame. There's that picture. The other thing that I think would work well is to look through these trees, so come with me. We're gonna go over here. Oh, I've gotta move fast, the sun's going. <clears throat> I wanna look through this way, and it's about moving around. Come with me, come with me, so you can see. It's about moving around so I can see all three pods. If you have a quick look over there, the view is kind of obscured, obscured by bushes and things like that, so it's a case of, if you move sideways, you see how the alignment changes and you start to get bushes going in front of the pods, all that stuff. So I need to move side to side until I get that alignment where I can see all three pods through the bushes and the trees. Nice one. Let's go this way a bit, that way a bit. It's just a case of, there we go. I quite like that. Extend the focal length a bit. Notice I'm letting aperture priority work out the exposure for me. I know that in this light and in these circumstances, it would do a great job. Inside the pod time. Now these are very confined spaces. And although with the sun over here, it's really great because it lights the front, but the inside's a pain because of these shadows. This side is in shade. We've got a highlight here. We've got a shadow there. We've got a shadow from me and my camera on the bed. Well, that's hopeless. Let me show you. If I just take a quick picture of that, it looks like that. Well, that's hopeless, isn't it? Now I could put some fill-in flash in. Let me just show you what happens if I try that. It will reduce it, but it's not gonna cure it. So we're gonna have to wait until the sun goes in behind a cloud. And by the magic of cinema, the sun has gone. So if I take this picture again, and we've left nothing different, look at that, look at the difference between that harsh, harsh ghastly shadow and the fact that it's completely gone. This is what I mean about there's no such thing as bad light, there's just the right light for the thing that you're doing. Now if we look at that, it's pretty good, it's quite nice, but I think the ceiling's a little tiny bit dark, so I am gonna put a little puff of fill-in flash in there, but I only want the tiniest puff, so I'm just gonna dial it, I'm gonna dial into minus two fill-in flash. I'm still using aperture priority, I'm just letting the camera and the flash talk to each other, and that's better. It's only a little lift, but it just kind of stops it looking quite so dark up in the roof. This one here, it's an overview of these park homes with the trees. We've got a bit of sky, I'd rather have more blue, but we haven't quite got as much as I'd like, but there we go. It's not the most dramatic artistic shot in the world, but it is an overview. And by running the road up there, a little bit of this willow tree, the greenery behind the light on the homes, it should be good. I'm gonna use A, I'm gonna zoom around as usual until I find the right place. And the right place is just there, which is 17 millimeter on a crop sensor, a DX. Focus on the third, second hut in, second hut, second van in. I'm gonna use an aperture of F11. That's gonna give me 125th of a second. And I wanna get as high as I can so we don't get any tapering in. There's that shot. There's another little shot here. I want to look across the top of this hedge at the park homes just over there beyond and use the tree trunk and the willow and this pole here, <clears throat> by playing with the focal length, I can just kind of push it in over to one side so we won't see it. So first of all, massacre the hedge, line up the shot. Which focal length? I don't know. It's the one that works. So I just play with the zoom until I find the place where it crops the pole out. I can see those two homes in the nice light, just peeping through the tree. Little bit of that hedge 
and squeeze the shutter f16 lots of depth of field 80th of a second using a 36 millimeter lens for those of you that want to know and i've still got it on mirror lock up from an earlier shot and there it is there's another one from up here so we can look down on them by climbing up on top of a bin i've got a good kind of an overview of the park it's just a cut i'm going to try and do a panoramic so I'm going to start here, F11, 180th of a second. Take the first shot, remember where the van on the left is. Move across a bit, and another, and another. Hope that works. So we've come back and it's now the evening and the light has completely changed. Also, we've got loads of people wandering around here now. If I take a quick, quick picture, not a quake picture, you'll be able to see it does look very different to the way it looked earlier on so let's see what else we can get with it i'd quite like to have a few more people about it is looking a little bit deserted but i do think the evening light on these tents and vans are quite nice the shot i'm thinking of is the trees the blue sky but i don't want to get these little posts in so by carefully composing it and moving the camera around and by using a little bit of foreground i'm going to use some of this greenery here to frame the top of the picture 18 millimeters aperture priority because it just takes the work out of things. F13, so I know I've got lots of depth of field and a good middling aperture, 200 ISO. Focus on the first tent, turn the camera to get the composition, just kind of move myself up and down, only tiny bits to get that bit of greenery. And we've even got a person in it getting in the back of his car. Yeah, it doesn't look like a bad place to camp, does it? And what could be better when you're outdoors of an evening? than one of these bad boys. Nearly burnt my finger. So I'm gonna shoot with a long lens this time, f2.8, the long 70 millimeter, 200 odd millimeter, f2.8. I want to isolate the barbecue against the background. I quite like the camping stuff. I quite like the bag of barbecue things, barbecue coals on the table. Actually, I don't, I'm gonna just move to lose those. A bit longer and focus on the barbecue. 500th of a second at f2.8 and that's pretty cool really isn't it right we've got some people and they're beautifully backlit you see these guys over here they're putting up their tent sort of behind me they're nearly not they're really nicely backlit so i'm going to use the long lens and isolate them against that big tent over on the far side of the field with a shallow depth of field so it focuses on them so i'm using about 135 millimeters i'm going to go for f2.8 so it's really really wide 200 ISO, let's see what we can do. That's really cool, look. These guys, they're sort of learning to fill up their tent. I did speak to them in the first place and say, is that okay? And they said, yes, they're really nice people. It's always worth asking people these things. Do one more like that. As the tent's going up, and I might hang around after you've gone and take a couple more. Just getting a bit lower to see, oh, they've walked off, Never mind. Never mind, I'm just going to shoot a few more. And finally, I want to get a shot of some people with some tents and caravans like that, at least having a nice time in the evening. We've got these guys sitting here under the tree, which is really nice. And I've asked them their permission and they've said that's okay. So I'm going to see what I can do. To do that, I'm going to want to use a long lens to bring the caravans up behind and the tents. And I only need to get down pretty low. So again, trusty long lens, wide aperture, f2.8. I want to shoot across the top of this little grassy bank here. So let's get down low. I might need my glasses so I can have a peer in the back. And of course, when you're doing this, someone's going to move. And they have. <clears throat> oh, he's moving some more. Oh, that's cool. It's all right. He's really moved. Right. Let's just focus on those. Ah, oh, he's turned his back to me. Ah, oh, here we go. Man with a stripy shirt. Man with stripy shirt. <laughs> Can you sit down again? Sorry, that was really cool. You know, when you were doing your Vogue thing, you were kind of leaning on one elbow. Ah, perfect. Thanks, mate. Carry on, people, enjoy. There we go. What nice people, look at that. Oh, at least they're all laughing now. Because I didn't want to get a shot of his backside in, you see. Ah, oh, there we go. So we've got a few nice pictures of some people in the sun, enjoying a drink. 
on holiday in the country. So that's probably about it. I think that's a wrap. <clears throat> it's not the most exotic and exciting of locations, but these are the challenges that you might face if you're gonna take on a few jobs. I have quite enjoyed it. At least I'm out of the office in the sunshine, so that's really cool. Now it's time for home because Lorna's chomping at the bit, aren't you, Lorna? <laughs> She's nodding, that's what the wobble was. Cheers, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos, or for more great photo tips, workshops, and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.